Hello everyone, uh, my name is Rhonda Booth and I am one of the editors for this new book, Pediatric Neuropsychology within the Multidisciplinary Context. So I'm a research psychologist and I'm also a lecturer. I'm based at Great Ormond Street Institute of Child Health, which is part of University College of London. And there I run a postgraduate program on clinical and applied pediatric neuropsychology. So we're very um, pleased to uh, introduce this book and I'd like to introduce um, my co-editors. Oh, thank you very much, Rhonda. Um, so people will probably get a sense of the international flavour from this book by just listening to the accents that um, Rhonda, Cathy and myself have. Um, my name is Tara Murphy. I'm a consultant paediatric neuropsychologist and co-lead of the paediatric neuropsychology team at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital here in London, UK. Um, my background is from Ireland, but I've been living in London uh, for quite a long time. And I am Kathy Zabracki. I'm the Chief of Psychology at Shriners Children's in Chicago. I'm also an adjunct professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Northwestern University Medical School um, in Chicago. And I run the postdoc and predoctoral program at Shriners uh, in Chicago. Great. Well, it's um, our pleasure to um, introduce the book to you. Um, we want to use this as an opportunity to talk about why this book came about and describe the overall structure of it, and also why we think it should be on your bookshelf, or more importantly, it should be open on your desk. So this, this is, well, it's a really exciting book for anybody who uh, works in this field within the uh, paediatric arena. Um, and we felt that this book had been a long time coming. There are other books um, of a similar nature um, published and available, but they tend to originate from one particular country. And the vision that we had was that we'd be able to include uh, several regions, both uh, authors from several regions, but also readers from across the world. So we could see this gap in the literature. Um, and we were very keen on combining research um, as applied to theory, and then the translation of that into clinical practice. The other key, um, or the other bonus of this book is how very much multidisciplinary it is. So in my setting, I'm very fortunate to have easy access to neurologists, psychologists, um, physiatrists, all working together, occupational therapists. And that was one of the goals too in this book is really get everybody's uh, perspective. Um, so you'll find chapters from language therapists, occupational therapists, as well as um, psychologists and pediatric neuropsychologists. I mean, neuropsychology is exciting. We've got all these new technologies out there that was understanding the brain and the brain behavior relationships so a lot more. And I think this has moved on so quickly in the last um, few years as well, but maybe 10 years, 20 years. So it's really nice to be able to... Um, I think there's just such a, a wealth of information out there. I just, I, I, I struggle to see how clinicians can keep up with it. So we think that this book at this point in time was just sort of a nice way of integrating that research and having it in a nice, easy, um, easy to read format um, that you, someone can actually dip in and out of as well. Rhonda, would you like to tell us a little bit about the, um, the layout of the book, the content of it. That's yeah, sure. Right, just to give you a bit of an overview of the structure of the book. It is in three parts. And the first part is focusing on sensory and cognitive processes. The second is looking at factors that influence clinical formulation. And then thirdly, factors that influence assessment and feedback. So just to give you an overview, we, we've got actually got 15 chapters and this is no by no means limited. We could have actually had more. And maybe if, if Matt Keith allow us a second edition, we may actually even increase this load. But we wanted to really cover those key processes that we think are important when you assess a child, you know, be it their vision, hearing, sensory integration, motor coordination, moving on to more higher processes, language, speech, visual spatial processing, attention, memory, auditory processing, executive functions, social functions, and disruptive behavior, as well as sort of key um, academic skills, such as literacy and handwriting. The next part moves on to factors that we think were important that may influence 
clinical formulations. And these can include things that are, might be intri intrinsic to the child or, or extrin extrinsic, <laughs> external factors, um, such as um, you know, the prenatal, prenatal exposure to medicines and chemicals, um, early adversity, and also uh, the school environment and educational environment. And then to the internal to the child, um, aspects of mental health, intellectual disability and speech, motor and physical limitations. Lastly, we wrap up with factors that we think influence or are important to consider when we're taking a, a, a valid assessment. Uh, you know, factors that we have to consider both when we're assessing a child and also giving the feedback, taking into account the child's culture, whether the testing is, is valid, um, whether you know, the child is motivated and is giving their best effort. Um, what happens if we have to do a remote assessment? You know, this new developing and exciting field of, of teleneuropsychology, how can we ensure that we are assessing what, we're looking, you know, what we want to look at? And lastly, important factors when feeding back the results from the assessment. At the end of the book, there's a measures index. So there's actually a compendium of at least 160 different assessment tools, interviews, and questionnaires that cover different domains. So the, you know, the most recent publication of an assessment tool is, can be found here. So we, have, we think this is a very useful and, and helpful resource. These are actually all our wonderful authors who work together so hard for each chapter. So we're, we're very thankful that for their collaborations and their expertise and, and working together to, to um, produce some brilliant chapters. Kathy, who do you think will benefit most from our book? I think anybody from an early career professional or a trainee in graduate school, either in psychology, occupational therapy, PT, all the way up to a skilled uh, trainee who, or a skilled clinician who may have not seen certain patients in a while and want to refresh their memories and certain issues and just to refresh the current knowledge and research. Um, so I really think it is broad-based. I feel like this should be on everybody's uh, bookshelf who's seeing uh, children with a variety of neurodevelopmental needs. Parents too could benefit from, I think that might be a helpful um, for parents to also review certain chapters and understand some of the tests and measures that providers use and why. I could, yeah, a lot of people can benefit from this book. So one of the challenges we had with the book was trying to encourage the um, authors to remain faithful to the particular cognitive or sensory domain that they were covering. And in fact, the reality is that most children and young people that we see in pediatric neuropsychology have more than one presenting area of difficulty. That's not the way the brain is designed um, to just focus on one particular cognitive domain. So that was that was quite a challenge to make the case studies relatable um, and sufficiently complex, but also to keep them simple enough so that they were demonstrating the particular um, topic that that chapter was choosing to draw on theory and um, intervention on. So yeah, perhaps not the first thing that might have sprung to mind when we were um, initially designing the chapters, but something that quite quickly became apparent when we started to review first and second drafts of chapters and see what was going to be important in the book. It's been a, a true pleasure. I know we didn't know each other. I didn't know the two of you prior to this, so it has been fun um, just on this journey. It took us a little bit longer because of the pandemic, uh, but I think that actually the pandemic actually did change part of our structure of our book in, by including the teleneuropsychology. So um, that was an exciting piece that was unexpected, I guess, but I think we'll have a lot of benefit for the future. So one question we could all try and answer is how to sum up this book in one sentence. I think I would emphasize the, um, the integration between academics and, clin and clinicians and trying to understand the child, understand the developing brain, and a sort of a, a go-to guide that you can sort of dip in and out of um, when you need to, whether it's a, from interest or a clinical case that you're working on. And I think it will be, it will be there 
been relevant for, for quite a few years as, as well until we need to update it. My point of view, I think um, the combination of the academic and the clinical is incredibly informative. Um, the cases are relatable. Um, there is a good influence of uh, neuroscience on day-to-day -day practice. Um, and yeah, most of all, it's, it's a real pleasure to read. It, the, the cases are interesting and there is a rich and broad field um, and range of cognitive, sensory and day-to-day uh, -day practice uh, factors that are covered across the various chapters. And I think your point to the cultural um, aspect is key in that we did try really hard to not make it UK and US based. But even then, um, there are discrepancies within the US and how children are, um, the programs and the services children receive. And so that's, so you will see that, you will see some discrepancies, but it just makes you as a clinician think, think outside the box and, and see what's appropriate in your town, your neighborhood, um, you're part of the world. In addition, I just want to thank the, both of you for your great collaboration, as well as uh, McKeith uh, and their patience with us um, and just their, their guidance along this journey. Um, and also, obviously, the, the authors and the patients that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis that are giving, that are inspiring us to write these books, to um, discuss these cases and to have these challenging conversations. Uh, so just to thank everybody for listening into this podcast, we really hope that you will access um, this book and enjoy reading it. And um, yeah, thank you for taking the time to listen to us today.